Having your own completely local RAG AI agent is mind blowing. Nothing is exposed to the internet and the local models know everything you want it to know about yourself. So you can really ask it to help you with anything in your life. That is why in this video, we're gonna be going over how you can set up a local RAG environment that is completely offline and personalized to just you. Let's break down what we're gonna be doing here. So when it comes to AI agents, there are two pretty big flaws when it comes to using public large language models. One, you're sending your data to some company, like not just email and password, but you're sending them your thoughts, your plans, your, your feelings, your educations, your interest, and like a ton more. You're sending them like a lot of personal data about yourself. The second thing is that these endpoints can cost money. And I do think there should be some kind of cost to these API endpoints, especially the really big models that have like a ton of GPUs. But many of the times you don't even need to use a large model, you just want some powerful enough where you can ask it generic and popular questions you'll get answers based on that and then also you'll get answers based on questions that you ask it about yourself so what we're gonna be doing in this video is creating an app that consumes data about you we're going to like chop it up and save it into a vector like database and then we can ask personal questions about yourself like am I available today at 3 p.m. without worrying about your data going to somewhere else or being sold off for a profit if you're new to the channel I'm Eric Roby a software engineer with over a decade of experience, and I've helped over 100,000 developers learn and grow within their craft. With that, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so here we are. We have our local model RAG YouTube directory already created. We already have some items. So inside here, we already have like a git ignore because it's going to add like a bunch of dependencies when we install items. But we're going to have our schedule.txt. This is what we're going to be uploading to create our vector database. Um, It has a couple things for like the week. It doesn't talk about like future, but it's just Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And it just has some um items right inside here that we can search for. We're gonna have our requirements, which is FastAPI Uvicorn. Pydantic AI is gonna be our AI agent framework. This just allows us to be able to upload like PDFs if we need to do that. The transmitters is to turn it into like a vector database. NumPy, we have this Llama CPP Python, which allows us to be able to use Olama on our application. Then we have Jinja and we have Python multipart. And I already have the front end created, but we're not gonna start with it yet. We'll kind of introduce it afterwards. So we have our main.py, which just is instantiating our application. And then we have a controller that just kind of opens up our templates for our front end when it needs to happen. And everything else is completely empty. So that's what we're gonna start with. So let's start with the model itself. So the model is gonna be what the AI agent responds back to the user with like what information we don't want the the large language model to kind of say whatever they want we want to only allow it to say what we want it to say and then we'll extract that piece of data out from our front end so what we're going to add here a return class of a virtual assistant so we're kind of pretending our rag or our ai agent is a virtual assistant for us right and we want it to return with two things. So we send in our schedule. It's going to vectorize that. I just made up that word vectorize, but it's going to turn that into a vector as good as possible. It's going to give us our availability in our next open time slot. So our availability is going to be let the user know if he is available. If not, let the user know why. And then the other one's going to be next open time slot. Yeah, if the user is available, let them know the next item on their list. If not available, let them know the next available time. So we're going to return two items back to the user, just availability and next open time slot. So it's going to be a quick, hey, am I available here? Yeah, cool. Let's schedule it. Hey, am I available here? No. When's the next time slot? Boom. So it's going to be pretty quick and efficient that way. And that's really the only model we need right here. Now, our utils, we're going to skim over because there's about 100 lines of code. But what we're doing is creating our vector database, saving the document as embedded blobs, and then when our AI bot takes in a query, we make sure we do semantic versioning on what it believes is the top three responses from our document. But now we need to go ahead and create our AI model. And inside here, we are going to set up our AI model. So our Olama model, so we're using um, Llama 3.2. If you don't already have it installed, you need to go ahead and install Olama. Then you need to jump into your terminal and do Olama run Llama 3.2. This will download Llama 3.2 onto your machine. 
And then you can just do slash buy at the end once it's all set up because it's trying to make you communicate with your Llama 3.2 right there. If you need help with setting up Olama and what's even going on here, I have a video somewhere. I don't know what side it pops up on. It's on one of these sides. But go ahead, check that out, and then you can come back. But here we are setting up our Olama model. It's sitting under the open AI model. That's okay. That's what it should be sitting under due to the Pydantic AI documentation. The model name we're going to be using is 3.2. That's what we just installed um, on Olama. And it's running at HTTP port slash slash localhost port 11434 slash V1. That is where Olama is running Llama 3.2. Now we're going to create our agent. We're going to use our Olama model. Our result type is that virtual assistant that we created. We're going to allow three retries. And our system prompt is you are a knowledgeable personal assistant. Use the provided context to answer the user's questions accurately, provide a detailed and context aware answer. Awesome. So now that we have our AI model and we have our utility set up, what we're going to do now is jump into our services. Now inside here, we have our service of upload file, which is going to consume a file. If not PDF or text, we're going to throw an exception. We're going to try and upload this to our directory. So we have a directory. We're going to call it uploads. We're going to save the file inside. We're going to pull that file out, chop it up, save it as the closest thing we can as a vector in our database. And then we're going to delete the file inside and then delete the item above or the folder above. So we can see that we're doing all that. And then we finally clean up and delete that folder. So that's how we can save a new file. Then when we ask a question, we're saying, hey, we need to grab the context from the find relevant context query. If there is no context, we're going to throw an error of saying no documents found the knowledge base. And I'll kind of show that first. Then we're going to have our prompts of using the context below answer the question, which is going to be our context and our query that we're passing in. And then we're looking for the answer. We then want to have a response await our knowledge agent, and then we're going to run our prompt. And then we're going to return the answer response and context, which will bring us to our controller where we only really need to add um, two more items, which is post and ask. And it really just relates that information to our service. And then our service calls our utils and our AI models. So with that, let's open up our terminal and let's do a uvicorn app dot main colon app dash dash reload. There we go. We can see our vector store DB right there. And now if we go in, open up our application, and we go to slash docs. If we try and ask a question and we say, am I busy on Wednesday at 5 p.m.? It should have no idea, right? So it's going to tell us no documents found in the knowledge base. All right. If I come over here and I say try it out, we can upload a file right here by clicking choose file. And then inside our folder, I have this schedule.txt. And we can open that up. And I can say execute. Here we got file scheduled text uploaded it indexed successfully. Now if I come back down here and I say am I busy at 5 p.m. It's going to take a while but it should give us a response based on our schedule of the text that we just submitted. And here it is. If we scroll down we can see our response of you are not available on Wednesday at 5 p.m. because you have a client call scheduled for that time. Check your schedule on Friday. There it is. Pretty cool stuff. <laughs> so if we remove all this and we say, hey, we want to do that, we have our AI document assistant, which upload documents, chat with your documents. If I say right here, am I busy Thursday at 6 p.m., it's going to say no documents found in the database. Well, here we can do the same thing, upload our schedule.txt. So I can say upload documents. It's been uploaded. Am I busy? It's thinking you are available. The next time on your list is happy hour. All right. What about am I busy Friday at 2 p.m.? You have a meeting with your team at 2 p.m. and are not available. There is no open next time slot. And that's probably because it's trying to, I probably have like 30 minute blocks all set. So this is really cool stuff, guys. This is really cool stuff. And this is how you can like create your own AI local AI like in your house completely offline your your data is not going anywhere you might have a database set up at your home 
that no one has access to. And you can just like set up APIs to put your calendar in there or set up whatever you want, all your data. And you can literally set up a bot to just ask it questions about your life and to see where everything's going. It's kind of mind blowing. And hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you were able to learn something. And I will see you in the next.